black men and suicide. So when you hear the word suicide, how do you intake it? What do you think about that word? What do you think about suicide? How does it make you feel? I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I'm gonna be blunt as possible about it. I kind of was ignorant to suicide, meaning like I felt like people that were suicidal was kind of weak until I learned like, you know, like I had to like put myself in their shoes, you know? And I went through a lot in my life, but I just feel like you gotta be strong in this world because nobody gonna help you but you. I just told somebody this, I'm like, man, you out asking with your hand out, but at the end of the day, you got people sleeping under a bridge. You got women who've been molested or this and that, and they still get through it, you know? They found faith, they found the way to like, you know, achieve and still win out here. You got Tyler Perry who was homeless, now he a billionaire. It's just like, I feel like when you think of the big picture of suicide, it's like, wow, people kill themselves over something that maybe was major, but was so minor compared to other people, you know, what they going through. Cause we all go through something, you know what I'm saying? It's just about how you overcome it, you know? So now I got a different look on suicide, but I just feel like it's still like, if them people had somebody to talk to or like just was strong or really, like jump out of their body and be like, you know what, maybe I'm tripping, you know? Maybe I could just do this or, or, or get into God or, you know, run a day or like, you know, start working out and try to like, you know, figure out how to go about those things differently than just killing yourself. Cause just, you just gonna kill yourself, the problem's still there. And now you're dead, you probably got kids and it's just worse than that, you know? So like, okay. so, yeah. It's a lack of support. Yeah. Mm. A lack of support, what does that mean? <coughs> um, excuse me. Like you said, uh, let's say you're going through something, it's the feeling of despair. Uh -huh. It's not necessarily the action. Like it's the, right. it's not saying like this thing is hard. It's saying that I see no way out. That's it, right. It's not, it's, it's not me stubbing my toe or being homeless or something. Like them people, like they got a friend yeah. under that bridge with them. Uh -huh. That friend gonna make all the difference. Uh -huh. That one. That, that teddy bear, whatever whatever it is, that friend to make all the difference. When people feel like that, they feel like nobody's going to be able to help. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. That's the that's the thing. And like when you get down to that, that's that's hopelessness. Yeah. Got it. Uh, it's just another way of, like you said, despair, depression, anything that you know, like you you don't see no way out. You feel as though that now the world is turning on you. Uh -huh. That it's this one big this one big black hole that you just, you don't know if it's an up or down, or like you don't know where to go. So in, in that way, um, honestly, it's just a lack, of, a lack of a support system because you would be surprised on how far either, hey, what's up, what's up, Joe, how you feeling? You know what I'm saying? You would be surprised that, hey man, wanna pop out today? You would be surprised how far that goes. Got it. You'll be surprised how far, like, hey, just calling a checkup on you, bro. You know what I'm saying? I know you was going through something. Here, let me hit you uh, with a few dollars. You know Got what I'm it. saying? You'll be surprised how the little things, you know what I'm saying, can take a person. Like, hey, look, I may not got this hundred, but hey, look, I can break you off with 50 at least. Something like that. Got it. So, um, to piggyback off of that, I would also say that a lot of brothers were we don't really ask for the help. Yeah. And where we feel, we, uh, we, we feel ashamed to ask for the help, that like we got too much pride in us, yeah. uh, but it's there. There are spaces, there are safe spaces for us just like this mm -hmm. that are, you know what I'm saying, where we could speak our minds and tell each other what we're going through. I know my brother Jarrell right here, um, I've known him for some time now, and we'll check up on each other. Oh, how, how you doing, man? I, I heard you going through this. He's been here for some of my darkest times. Mm -hmm. When I lost my grandmother, he's, you know what I'm saying? So just having somebody there, and even if it's not a friend, mm -hmm. knowing that you can step outside and seek the help, I feel like that's also very powerful. Right. Who got some let time? Me, sorry, let mm -hmm. me ask this question. The holiday season is coming up. Mm -hmm. And in our industry, that's a triggering time for many people. Because we might take for granted, I got family, I got friends to be around, but Thanksgiving might be the worst time for somebody who doesn't have a family. Mm -hmm. Christmas, mm -hmm. the new year, I didn't accomplish what I needed to accomplish this year. Now I got to go into a new year, you know, not feeling whole. Is the holiday season tough for you all? Has been tough? Yeah, but you can make uh, the best out of anything. Like I had a Friendsgiving. 
You know, you can have a Friendsgiving. Like, if you don't have a family or you, your family don't live out here, you can just have a Friendsgiving. You can. Well, and, yeah. and so that would help the same way. If I'm feeling despair and depression, yep. making sure that I'm around other people, yeah. bringing me joy, yeah. making me laugh, yeah. making me think, reminiscing, day. that may help. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. that's better because you got family, like, you might... Okay, it's a lot of fake stuff in family. Like you might be fake kicking it with a bunch of other family members. They talking about you, and it's like it's kind of phony. But when you with your friends and y'all enjoying each other, having fun, playing mm-hmm. cards, everything goes. Away. Yeah, you know. Right. That's I will. Right. I would like to say that the friends aspect of the holidays yeah. having its own day within it yeah. has helped out. I would has helped out a lot of people. You yeah. know, because family is. It's not like how it used to be. Yeah. Ten people in the house. Eight people in the house. Now your grandma might live in Kentucky, yeah. your mama in Texas, right. and you know you might not have so friends. And you know that's our new family now. Yeah. So we know in general um, that when we talk about the topic of mental health and suicide. There's a cloak of shame, a, a cloak of quietness. Mm. You know that's internal information. We don't need to be talking about that out loud. But again, in talking about what happened during the pandemic and how we sat back and got in tune with ourselves and, and, and saw this shift happening, at least in our industry, mm-hmm. that folks are saying, no, I need help, mm-hmm. right? But where does the shame come from when you're hurting, right? To say, I need help, I need assistance. I think because that- we're so spiritual, right? We, we, we believe in the village. So why don't we take opportunities to utilize services? I, I, w- I would say, uh, I know some of my trauma from asking for help comes from being at home. Like, it's, it's been so many times when you're going through something, somebody tell you, you better not. Mm-hmm. You, and it starts from, at least for me, uh, started when I was a child. Like, not necessarily being able to, let's say if you're crying, they say, I'm gonna give you something to cry about. I'm showing a legit emotion here and you're threatening me. And you're my guardian. Right. Is it because you're a male? Oh, no, that's just no. a, I think that's just a teaching. I think, it, I think okay. it's overall, um, I, think that's a, I think that's a thing that certain cultures uh, take some odd pride in um, to the point where like, if you're going through something, you gotta keep that to yourself. Okay. Um, if, you're, if you're not perfect, you can't show people that. Uh, right. Uh, and I, I definitely think that it comes, it starts from the home. Cause if it's normal for you to talk about your issues as a child, you're gonna talk about your issues as an adult. Uh, it absolutely. just so happens that uh, there are a lot of children out here. Um, sometimes they don't, I won't even say necessarily it's the parents' fault. Sometimes they don't even know when to ask. Uh, so I, I do think it's just a, a, a habitual thing. Okay. Yeah. We also have to acknowledge a shift too in the times like generational we talked about generations earlier and you mentioned the home we think about it most people most young people are going to spend more time with their teacher and with social media more than they ever will spend time with the people that's in their house their parents siblings and other family members so i think that there's something to be said about the influence of social media and the language that comes through like any of these platforms or the interpretation that's encouraged and thinking about the power of language just at its core but how it's expressed through music to your point it does play a part in that because when we think about like i want to say the third the third leading cause of death is suicide for black males that are 15 through 24 yes. and we think about the music that that generation is listening to like i don't even have to name the name that joint just sad like i'm like this is enjoyable for you? Like mm-hmm. leaning in and it's like, I want to drink my heart away. Like, I don't know if that's some stuff, but that, it all is <laughs> along that same line. It's just like, those are some of like the, I want to say um, indicators, but like they contribute to some of like the signs or um, precursors to suicidal uh, symptomology or signs that mm-hmm. may be presented that people might not even realize. You know, everything starts in the house. And uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of mental illness started in the house, you she know, does. like he was saying, like, hey, somebody telling you, hey, what you crying for? I'm going to give you something to cry about. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, why, why sure. you slouched over? No, yep. stick your chest up. Yep. And then they hit you in the chest. Yep. Stick your chest up again. <laughs> right. Hit you in the chest. So it's like, 
they call like, now I'm gonna make you a man instead Just of that. actually showing you the yes. way. Right. You wanna show me the way to be a man through physicality. Yes. When in actuality, I'm going through mental. Uh, a mental, yeah, you know. This is uh, a trauma. Exactly, <laughs> it's like, and they don't realize they're bringing the trauma only because it was done to them. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So our Generation. great, exactly, Generation. our great right. grandparents, you know, they had to structure our grandparents to be strong. You know, they was going through a time yeah. where it was Malcolm X, Martin yeah. Luther King, people was just being killed just because you was black. Yep. Mm -hmm. But again, why aren't we asking for help? If you're that far into your despair, mm -hmm. if you're that far into your depression, it's like when we lost, I, I know 15 people who died with mm -hmm. COVID. But I knew to go into counseling, but voila, look, I'm a, I'm a clinician. I know better, right? Why don't we ask for help? It's two key right. identities of men in general that everybody has a consensus on, protect mm -hmm. and provide. Mm -hmm. So you if you get that. to going for, like asking for help, you are not gonna be seen and identified as a protector and as a provider if that's what you can't do for yourself. So I think again, it goes to the language and the interpretation of expectation. If men weren't just seen in that vein, then I think that would be much more like openness and just kind of like leaning into being like, hey, I don't have it all together and I still am a pro provider and protector in every other aspect of like my identity that people can see in me. Absolutely. I feel like, uh, I'm, like well, bro. Uh, I, I'm gonna just say this real quick. I feel like um, why people don't ask for help, especially like in our community, is because for one, pride, two, embarrassment, mm -hmm. and also yeah. a lot of people. I'm guilty of this. It's like they they got to give you advice on why you're going through what you're going through. So mm -hmm. like you might you might need some money, and I might be like, man, why you run out of da da da? Didn't I just give you this and mm -hmm. you know all That's that? Insane. So yeah, so it's like now you kind of embarrassed and you already. Like you got pride, so you really don't want to ask. And now that you did ask, you got what you was expecting, which was something negative out of it. So that's absolutely, that's absolutely. Yeah. Uh, jumping off uh, what he said, uh, as far as the protect and provide stuff, uh, there came a point, and man, I'm, I'm guilty. I still think, I, I still think about this like now. Uh, I don't got time. Mm -hmm. uh, I gotta, I gotta do what I gotta do. I don't got time to sit back and soak and and really internalize my, my emotions and my feelings, because I don't got time for it. I got things to do, I gotta go to work, I got things to take care of, I gotta pick up other people, I gotta take care of my nephews, make sure they're straight. So that, that's, that's how I would see that part. There's no, there's no time for it, I gotta do what I gotta do. I don't really have time to sit back in and go through all the, go through the whole motion. But are you understanding that we have to start making the time? Yeah. Of course. For yeah. our mental yes. health? Yes. Right, right? Mm -hmm. Do you see a shift happening? Do you start, are, you, are we getting more in tune with ourselves where your best friend would say, man, I'm in a dark place, brother. Mm -hmm. Can you come over here? Can we go out for drinks? Mm -hmm. Cause I don't know how I'm gonna make it through. Oh, yeah. Are we seeing something different happen? Yeah, we, uh, we, uh, we definitely seeing a shift in the culture just like that, you know, for our safe spaces or even just, you know, picking up the phone and be like, hey bro, can I come talk to you or can I, you know what I'm saying, pull up on you, we just chop it up, go out to get something to eat, whatever, uh, watching the Super Bowl together, and like, whatever it is, like as long as you're in a space where you know you have people around you that care for you and care about your well-being, that's all that that matters. Because yeah. um, it, it gets to a time where, uh, you know, being a man, especially a black man, you just looked upon as, uh, you will be all right. Mm. You'll be straight. Yeah. Right. But I just told you that I'm literally going through something and I don't know if I'm going to make it. Like, I need your help. Well, I don't know what else to tell you. And when, when a person says that to you, that is a moment in time where, it's like he was saying, that that moment of despair to the point where you become numb, mm. you don't want that to take over you because, you know, I've seen it. And when that takes over somebody, it's hard to like, not even like, you know, hard for them to uh, get out of that. It's hard for you to help them pull themselves out of that. Right. You, you draining your own energy. But in my personal opinion, if I got to drain my own energy to help you, that's what I'm gonna do. Right. I don't care how much energy I use, but I'm gonna do it. Absolutely. Because we don't need another black man, specifically black man, Leave in this world. We need more of us, not less than us. Absolutely. We strengthen up. Absolutely. So that's how. Let me, let me, go ahead. 
I don't know, I was just gonna say, I feel like the shift definitely changed because like what y'all said with media and how they portray a certain image, now they even bring in mental health into it. Like even with us sitting down talking about it today or with the rappers, I was just at a little thing, we did a mental health conversation, me a couple uh, big time Chicago rappers. It was just like putting mental health, uh, making it aware through celebrities and main figures, even with Bre Breakfast Club, Charlemagne, you know, it's a lot of people who speak on that now, books and mm -hmm. hotlines, so that's good. Gotcha. You know, sometimes when something has to knock on our front door in order for us to get it, have you all had anybody you know personally who has tried to commit suicide or achieve suicide? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know yeah. uh, a, a female I was dealing with a long time ago. She was so beautiful. I would never thought like, you know, she would be into that. But one time I seen her, she used to always wear like long sleeves. And one day she had like a tank top or whatever on. And I seen like the slit in the wrist. And I'm like, and you know, I had to like ask like, what's with that, you know? And then when she broke down and everything, it's just like, wow. Somebody can be so beautiful or like even with us, you would look at all us and never think like, hey, he thought about this or he going mm -hmm. through this, you know? So yeah. Absolutely. Definitely, uh, I seen uh, a person, you know, uh, go through the whole, like, you know, just all the levels. Like, you seen it from where it began uh, versus, like, uh, not versus, but you seen it where it started because of what someone said. And then, like, two, three months later, their whole body just looked different. And then three months later, again, their whole body looked different. And next thing you know, you know, so-and-so, so-and-so uh, killed herself last night. Mm -hmm. But you know where it started because, you know, he say, she say. So you you would be surprised on, like, you know, what words can do to a person. Mm -hmm. You would be very surprised. But also, uh, it's a lot of just turmoil that's going on in the world right now. And especially, you know, within us. Suicide is, is, is we not leading in it. But the fact that, you know, we are starting to, like, the trajectory of it is starting to go up with us. It's definitely alarming, and we should definitely like see where is where we can start making uh, time for each other. And be like, hey, make sure we set a schedule for us to go out and kick it, yeah. because you never know. Like, you could have been, you could have got hit by a straight bullet, yeah. but it'll play a mind on my mental. Like, I could have called, bro. Right. And tell you know somebody pop. personally Do who I has committed suicide or tried to. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he, um, I don't want to say his name, but uh, he, uh, we was talking about his mental health, about depression that he was going through, and the fact that, you know, he tried to, you know, he tried to take himself out, and it wasn't cutting, it wasn't, no, it was a gun. Right. So the fact that he actually tried it, and he was like, hey, like, I really put that gun to my head that, uh, last night. And it actually messed with me because I'm like, I was just with you. Right. Why you ain't say nothing? But that had been kind of messed up on my part because it's like, he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready to like, you know, be that open and that blankly honest with his, uh, what he was going through. And I can't, you know, pull that out of somebody. Mm. They got to be also ready to, you know, take those steps and like, you know, push forward and be like, okay, I'm ready to talk. I'm ready for someone to uh, that I can go to and they will listen to me. They ain't gonna interrupt me. They they gonna hear what I'm finna pour my heart out to and be like, hey, I'm going through this like and I need help. Got so, it. yeah, some tribute. Yes, um, you said something earlier about we never know the impact of just simply asking somebody how they're doing. Yeah. And when we talk about men, black men especially, not opening up. I think a lot of times. A consideration to be had is like are we also like leading with communication because it works both ways yeah in terms of like instead of being like yo bro why you ain't hit me and tell me this instead of us asking like hey man how you doing how your mental health going or i have a friend who would ask how's your spirit today i'm like dang that's super powerful that's super <laughs> and thinking about you know like <laughs> like hey how is my spirit and like being able to think how our communication from a proactive standpoint, even through questioning, can you know help somebody? And I love that you're talking through like the uh, impact of quality time spent. So like inviting them out, checking up on them, extending your hand, seeing the need, and not having an issue stepping up to fulfill it. Yeah, exactly. Because we all got stuff we are doing in our life. We got to go to work. You know, we got to you know 
uh, take care of our family. We got all of these, you know, requirements that, you know, we need to do in our life, but it ain't gonna hurt just, you know, take what, 10, 15 minutes out of your day to be like, hey, bro, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? What's going on with you? you know, how you Thanks. doing? Woo this, woo that. Well, be supportive, it, right? To be yeah. supportive, you know, okay. and, and that lacks in today's society. Anybody can pull up you know, and be like, hey, you know, I got a bar. Yeah. What's, what's to it? I'm drinking my pain away. Yeah. Right. I'm finna get ready and black out. Right. Hey, hey, what's to the smoke? Yeah. Let, me, let me bring this out. I think I'm hearing this, and, and this has been a, a, a challenge for me. It's taking off my Superman cape and sending it to the cleaners, right? As men, we are taught what? Like you said, be providers. Protectors. You know, protectors, stability, strong. You know, when you want, if, if I have a football team, I want a basketball team, who I'm going to recruit first? Because who, what race of men are known for being strong and agile and, you know, performers athletically? Us. But how dare us open our mouths and say that we're hurting, that we're in despair, that we're depressed, right? Are you all okay now with taking off your Superman capes? Oh, yeah. We not superheroes. I, <laughs> uh, well, I, I say that I'm becoming more comfortable with it. Like being an artist and like even an organizer in certain ways, I've learned to um, provide the things that I low key need for myself. And then I've learned that there is a community of people that also need these things. Let's say for holiday programming, it's like, hey, we having a dinner here. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that I'm, I'm taking it off. It's like, I, I don't need to wear it. I ain't gotta take it off. It's like, you can still, you can still exhibit those same strengths. Right. And you can learn that like, like Superman is Clark Kent. If you shoot Clark Kent with, a, with, a, with a, the strongest bullet, it still don't hurt him because he's still Superman. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, only, Absolutely. it's only in this, this, in this world where people, th- there's no duality. And once you have that duality and say like, no, I can still be strong and talk about this. Yes. I can still, uh, mm-hmm. I can still feel, um, I can feel lonely and still go hit up my homie and be like, hey bro, I'm like me and my homies like, we, yo, it's every, every season, one of us got a time where say, I am not okay, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, why you ain't hit me up in a week? I'm not okay. All right, All right let's figure it out. Got it. Um, mm-hmm. So it's just a, it's a thing where like, you gotta learn that you ain't gotta necessarily wear a cape. It could be right. a suit jacket. It could be just, or a tank top. Right. It can feel just as strong. Might be. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Gentlemen, are you all comfortable in your transparency, being vulnerable? I want each one of you to answer that for me. Are you okay being transparent and vulnerable? I'm okay with the result of it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, I'm not in, I'm not okay with the fact of uh, revealing too much of myself. But uh, due to the fact that you don't know what can be used against you, Got so me. I'm, I can tell you what I'm going through without telling you what I'm going through. Just be a little to, guarded to still. protect to protect myself. I mean, I'm an open book. I tell you, but I kind of got to be careful in a way. So yeah, you don't want it to be used against you. Exactly. Got it. Can you ask the question again, specifically? Are you okay with being transparent and being vulnerable? Because for me, if you sit around here thinking that I can handle everything in crisis, Mm -hmm. and then when you can't handle it, oh my God, let me swallow a gun. Let me take a bottle of pills. Let me jump off this roof, Mm -hmm. right? But I'm assuming, right? And I think it's an educated assumption that if I can open up, be who I feel I am, Mm -hmm. know that I have a strong support system, that maybe I won't look at suicide as an alternative. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I love that. So am I okay with opening up and being vulnerable? Yes, I am, because that's how I get my needs met. Very good, very good. I say I am. Well, I'm not never cool with being vulnerable at all, but like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm more I'm more um, open up to it, but not with people. I do it on the microphone. Like, I, I like, I, I rap like, or like I make music about what I'm going through or whatever it is. I don't tell people none of my business, you know? I'm real private, I don't trust that. But you do know when you say it on the microphone, we, we yeah, hear it. Yeah, but like, I put it in a way where it's like, <laughs> okay, is he going through this or this is just a song? Oh, or like, or somebody you. else, or it might be your life. You know, I rap it in other ways, like third person. Like, like, and that makes you feel comfortable. Yeah. But you're still getting it out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Very good. Um, 
I would have to say I'm finding comfort in being vulnerable around others. I'm starting to find comfort in it. Uh, more as of recently, uh, a thought that I would, that I struggled with before was I didn't want to be vulnerable around others because I felt as if my problem ain't your problem. So there's no need for you to, there's no need for you to worry about me. And another thought that I'd even, that I feel like a, a lot of us have, uh, like, oh man, my problem ain't your problem. And I feel like I got my back more than, more than anybody. But having that knowledge and knowing that you have uh, different places to go and talk to others and having a solid community around you, it does help a lot. Wonderful. Um, I, there's different levels of vulnerability, right? Okay. So you can be vulnerable in, in different situations, right? Okay. Um, but for mental health aspect of it, um, I feel like I'm a sharer, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a transparent person. I like to be transparent, especially to brothers, because mental health and telling somebody, yo, I love you, I love you. Like, I, I, I share those things with people. All, I've learned to do that, and it's just better, and it'll be better for us as a society. So I'm a sharer and being more vulnerable good, in good. certain aspects, though. Okay. Any final thoughts around um, this topic of suicide? Anything you want to share that could teach us something? or teach our audience uh, something. I, I would say uh, there was a statement that you, you said that uh, it was, you said you felt like my problems weren't your problems. It was a, uh, it was a quote um, that I heard from, James Baldwin was quoting someone else and he said that uh, if I am hungry, you are not safe. And I look at that in a sense of saying like if yo, if somebody in your community, somebody in your circle, your family, especially if they're close to you, if they're going to, through something, it will leak over. Absolutely. Um, when we think about the act of suicide, that's a very courageous act. Yes. When you think about it, to say I'm willing to forego this experience to dive into something that I've never seen or no one has ever reported back on, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of courage to actually go through with that. I agree. However, it's misplaced, it's like, my wish and hope and prayers that people that are experiencing that can have that same courage to ask their brother for help, to actually call one of them hotlines. So I really believe that it's a matter of misdirection and lack of like information and just community. I think at the core of all like interventions, prevention, so forth is community because that's where we get the accountability and the support and just the encouragement to be able to move through any challenge that we're experiencing. I just want to say uh, for anybody that listen or whoever want to listen or know from today, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming out here today and sharing with y'all like the, you know, what's on your mind or how y'all feel about suicide and mental health. And I also felt like um, from today, I'm always learning, you know, just call and check up on people. You know what I'm saying? Just Very you never good. know. If you ain't going through somebody, it could be somebody else going through it. You know what Especially I'm saying? Especially the stronger people in yes, your life. Yes, yes. So gentlemen, let me ask you this. So are you at a point now that if you really need some help, you would be okay, say if you're having some despair, to dial 988 and ask for help for the suicide hotline? I don't even to know call that was a suicide therapist. Hotline. You said what? I don't even know that was a suicide That's why they made this number real simple, yep. 988. Yep. You know, put it in your cell phones. You all are willing to go into counseling. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? There's no shame about being in counseling? No. no. Excellent. Is it free? Is it free? No. It can be. <laughs> <laughs> but even if it was twenty dollars, you would find a twenty dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah, right? for sure, for sure. For okay, sure. all right. Well, gentlemen, this has been such a rich conversation, yeah. and I like this because folks don't know that we do talk like this. This is kind of like barbershop yeah. talk, yeah. right? Barbershop Thanksgiving, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Any other right. Saturday you barbecue, yeah. right? And I'm so thankful for the Department of Health to start this. You know. Um, um, initiative to get us started and talk, especially men of color. And I thank you, gentlemen, okay? Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. much. I want you to enjoy your evening. All right. All right. Thank you.